Okay, hello everyone. In this video, we'll be looking at another example of um, trying to determine the language accepted by an NFA. So we have the following NFA here, which I call M. And the first thing that we want to determine is for a particular string, what are the states that the NFA reaches when reading that string starting from Q0, okay? And so that can be asked in a very compact form using the extended transition function of the NFA, right? So that's what this is. This is the extended NFA transition function, which just a reminder returns a set of states and the set of states that it returns are the states that it can reach from Q0 reading zero, right? And so the point of this exercise is just to determine which of the states are reachable from Q0 while reading the string 0, 1. Okay, well, let's have a look. So, oops. So suppose we're reading the string 0, 1. We know that Q0 starts here, right? So we start at Q0. What we can do, right, is we can start by reading this zero. Right? So we read this zero, then uh, we need to read a one, right? So initially it might seem that we're not actually able to do that, but what we can do is we can take this lambda transition for free, go from Q1 back to Q0, right? So now I'm back at Q0 and I've read this zero and now I'm trying to read a one. So from this Q0, now I can read the one and go back to Q1. Okay, so if that went a bit too fast, you can just think of it as starting at Q0. So this is the start. Then I read um, the zero. So I go to Q1. Then I use a lambda transition to go back to Q0. Then I use, I actually read the one to go back to Q1, right? So that means that if this returns a set of states, I already know that I have the set of states containing Q1. Okay, maybe there's more, right? Let's see. Um, well, from Q1, the other thing I could do, right? So instead of going to Q0, okay, what I could do is I could, um, from Q0, reading a zero, I, I have to go to Q1. Then I could use this lambda instead to go to Q2. Okay. And then I can use this one to go back to Q1. Okay, but that doesn't really help me in expanding the set of states I can reach because again, I reach Q1. The nifty trick here is that what I can do once I'm at Q1 is I can use another lambda transition. Because remember, the lambda transitions allow you to transition to different states for free. So what I could have done instead, right, is, let me rewrite this. I could have, let's say, gone to Q1 with a zero. Then I could have used the lambda transition to go to Q2. Then I could have used the one transition to go back to Q1. But then I could again use the lambda transition to go back to Q2, right? So using the lambda transition, I could go back to Q2, right? And because, um, because zero lambda one lambda is equal to zero one, this, um, this represents a valid computation where instead of getting to Q1, I get to Q2, right? So I can go also go from Q0 to Q2 while reading 0, 1. The other place that I could go to is instead of using the transition, the lambda transition here, I could have used this lambda transition to go back to Q0, right? And so here, instead of going from Q1 to Q2 with the lambda transition, I could go from Q1 to Q0 with the lambda transition. And again, this, um, represents a computation for zero one because zero lambda one lambda is equal to zero one. Okay. And so the other state that I could also reach will be Q zero. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. And so I've already closed the set of states that I can reach because clearly I can't reach more because this is all the set of states in my machine. Okay. And so then the next question is zero one accepted by this NFA? Well, the condition for this is that the set of states that I can reach from Q zero while reading this string zero one contains at least one final state, i.e. I need delta star Q zero zero one intersect the set of final states to be non-empty. But what this is, right, this is just Q zero, Q one, Q two, intersect, what is the set of final states? In this case, it's just Q zero, right? Whoops, it's Q zero. So according to the intersection operation, I take what's common between both sets. And in this case, that's just Q zero, right? So I have the set containing Q zero, which is of course non-empty. And so by the definition of what it means for an NFA to accept a string, I do indeed accept zero one. So the answer here is yes. Now, the potentially more complicated question here is, what is the language accepted by the NFA? That is, what are all the strings? The strings, not just the given string that I'm giving to you. Accepted by this NFA. I'll give you a second to think about it. Um, so I encourage you to pause the video and try your, your dab or try to take a stab at this question because it's actually quite a nice answer. Okay, so um, I might need to use the next page, but let's see if I can do it on this one. So I know that the any computation of my NFA is going to start at Q0. Um, and then no matter what I read, I'm going to have to go back to Q1, right? Well, I'm going to have to go to Q1, okay? Now, once I'm at Q1, I could do this um, silly business to go to Q2 and then go to Q1 and then consume some of this input. I could also consume this zero input if I am reading a zero on the second symbol and go back to Q0. But what I could also do is I could, um, for a second, ignore what's on my input tape, right? And use this lambda transition to transition back to Q0, okay? And then once I'm at Q0, I'm in an accept state. If I'm done reading my input, I accept. Otherwise, if I'm not done, I read the next symbol, I go to Q1, and then I use the lambda transition to go back to Q0. So in fact, what this is kind of simulating it's kind of just simulating the DFA with a single accept state that has a self loop, okay? Because what's going on is for any string, suppose zero, one, zero, zero, what you could do is you could consume the actual symbol uh, with this transition, go to Q1, and then go back to Q0 with this lambda for free. And then again, read this one, and then go back to Q0 for free, okay? And so actually, the claim that I make is that language accepted by M is sigma star, where sigma is zero, 1. And so in other words, the language accepted by uh, M is zero, 1 star, okay? And to really see that this is true, Consider any arbitrary string W, which will look like, you know, um, let me use, uh, let's say, so any arbitrary string is going to look like a sequence of symbols. So X1, X2, X3, Xn, right? Where each of these Xi's is going to be an alphabet, a, a symbol from the alphabet, right? And so, any of the symbols of the alphabet, so either zero or one, can be consumed from this transition, right? So 
any xi can be uh, used as a transition to go from q0 to q1 and then because um, you can use lambda transitions for free to get back to q0 and because if i have this string it's equivalent to having x1 lambda x2 lambda x3 lambda and so on xn lambda okay and this of course includes if you just want to accept the empty string, right? So this includes just wanting to accept the empty string because you would just stay at Q0, right? Because each string can be represented in a form that allows it to be accepted by the machine, and this form doesn't affect what the meaning of the string is, that shows you that the language accepted by M informally right so this isn't a completely formal argument but this is the idea that the language accepted by m is sigma star okay and so the only thing that i really need to, to do to 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 show you this was to make the observation that um, inserting the empty string at any position uh, in a string doesn't actually change what the meaning of the string is and i can use that empty string now to go back from Q0 to from Q1 to Q0, allowing me to um, create a choice where the NFA accepts the string. Um, and so, if you wanted to show this more formally, you could do a double subset inclusion proof, right? And one of the uh, directions where you want to show that. Um, for any particular string, you belong to the language accepted by M, that argument would be something like this, okay? Um, all right, so that concludes this exercise about determining what the language accepted by an NFA is and walking through a particular um, accept computation, namely the one for zero one.